which one actually is better for your 125. Hey guys, so since my last trip to Dollar Tree, I've been really curious about the sets that I purchased. And I know a lot of you were curious about them as well. So I figured the best thing to do to satisfy our curiosity was to compare uh, two of the sets that I bought. The first one we're gonna do together is the one from Puzzle Bug. And this one is called Fresh Flowers Outside Florist Shop. It is 350 pieces and it is 20 inches by 12 inches when it's completed. And this is by Crazy Art. Now this particular puzzle bug is the Deluxe, which is thicker pieces. And this is the first puzzle bug I've ever purchased before. So I'm really curious what this one is gonna be like because the only other ones that I have bought were the art box sets. And this one is called Coffee Every Day. Uh, yeah, please. It is also 350 pieces and it is also 20 inches by 12 inches when it's completed. The difference here is that we have Art Box and Puzzle Bug. They are both by Crazy Art, but the Puzzle Bug is the thicker pieces. This is the deluxe. So is there a humongous difference between these two sets? I don't know. I kind of feel like with the thicker pieces, we're probably probably gonna get a better hold with this one. I have tried Art Box before, but I've never tried the smaller count sets. And I'm pretty sure that the piece size is different than what I've worked with before. Now, I absolutely love both of these images. I mean, with the flower shop, you know what I've said before. I know nothing about growing flowers or anything for that matter. So, you know, if I was that good at that kind of stuff, this is gonna be my shop here. And as for the coffee one, well, you know how I am about coffee. If I don't have my cup of coffee first thing in the morning, you know, bad things happen. Hit that like button if you're the same way about coffee. And if you're not a coffee fan, let me know down below, what is your drink of choice? But anyways, like I said, I feel like these two sets are pretty much the best ones to do a comparison video with. Now, even though I know the overall quality of Dollar Tree puzzles is pretty much garbage, I feel like it's it'll be very interesting to know which one actually is better for your 125. Or does it really matter? Are they all the same kind of garbage? I don't know. This is gonna be fun to kind of figure out here. Let's open these two up. Let's start comparing these pieces and let's start putting these together. All right, so here are the sets. Let's open up Puzzle Buck first because I've never opened one of these up. So let's see if I can do this without tearing the box. All right, so what I'm seeing here so far is actually very promising. Check out that print here. That's a pretty good solid print. Got some very sharp colors. This is a very, very clear looking image. These pieces are definitely thicker, but you know, don't get too excited because you know, they are thicker pieces, but we're not talking about, you know, high quality thickness here. And of course, you know, things like this aren't gonna be surprising with these kind of sets, but that's okay. And of course you do have quite a glossy finish to these. So, you know, just be aware of that. But overall, this is quite impressive. I'll be very curious to see how these fit together and what the hold is like. So you know what? Let's move this to the side and let's quickly open up the art box set and just quickly compare the two pieces. And let's just pull out a uh, cup, one piece. Let's just pick out one piece because knowing me, I'm gonna end up throwing it in the pile of the other set and then just, you know, ruining the whole thing. So I'm kind of like pushing on these two edges here and there's definitely a difference in the strength of these pieces. Of course, the art box is more flimsy because obviously it is thinner than your puzzle bug sets. Quite honestly, just by looking at it, you cannot really tell the difference between these. I, I kind of think they're just about the same thickness, but the Puzzle Bug definitely feels stronger. And I'm not saying Puzzle Bug is like, you know, put all your force and be a beast with it and it'll be fine. No, obviously, but it definitely has way more strength than the Art Box pieces. We have pretty much the same amount of glare on these pieces. And the size is about the same as well. So really the difference I'm seeing so far here 
is the feel, the strength of these pieces. So you know what, guys? I think we need to get started on puzzle bug. So let's do that one. And then we're going to move on to the art box. And then we're going to do a final comparison and see which one is better for a buck 25. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so the sorting only took me about 10 minutes. So it was pretty easy. It's only 350 pieces. So I wasn't surprised it didn't take me that long. So what I did was for the first tray, of course, were the edges. For this tray here, as you can see, is mainly the pieces for like the, the brickwork here. For the third tray, basically this area here where the blues are. The fourth tray, there's kind of a lot of random stuff going on here, but it's mainly for like this area here, the windows, those particular details within the image. The next tray were just kind of like more of a reddish tone pieces. So it looks like it could be anything from up here or any bit of the walls. Next tray also had some red to it and it's mostly pieces but like edging from different details within the piece. And then for the last tray I did was just pretty much all the flowers and pumpkins and any plant life in the image. So I'm pretty sure this particular tray is gonna need resorting again, but we'll get to that later. Let's move on. together pretty easily. I must say I'm really liking the feel of these pieces so far. The hold, well, the fit itself is not that great because it can come, a, come apart pretty easily. It's not too bad so far what I noticed and I don't think I was able to do this with my other Dollar Tree sets but for the most part it actually can move around the puzzle table without too much damage happening to it. I spoke too soon, huh? Anyways, let's continue. So after that, I just grabbed whichever tray was closest to me and started puzzling away. I laid the path first, then worked my way into my shop, and then just continued to piece away any sections that I felt I could quickly make out at first glance from the trays. I initially thought that all the flowers would be the hardest, but honestly, it really wasn't too bad. I quickly sorted the different flowers into little piles and pieced it from there. Really, this was not a difficult image to complete. It did have some areas like the flowers that did throw in that challenge to it, but again, it was pretty easy. And most importantly, I had a lot of fun with this one. This puzzle took me about two hours to complete, but I actually didn't stop there that night. I moved right on to the next one. And as much as I wanted to have coffee whilst completing this puzzle, I didn't because it was late at night and I had to work the next morning. All right, now I'm gonna try to work on the same puzzle table with the first puzzle on it still. So we'll see, we'll see how this works out. But in terms of sorting, I'm gonna be honest. Whenever it comes to like these kinds of designs on puzzles, I am terrible when it comes to sorting. I don't know what it is. I guess I, I, my brain just can't handle the amount of stuff going on here and I just don't even know where to start in terms of sorting. But here's what I did so far. I kind of just broke it up into a bunch of little piles that had like any kind of similar color tones to them. As you can see here, we have this kind of style going on here. We have the dark browns and white lettering here. I mean, I don't even know how I, I can explain this to you, but I'm sure you can kind of see and just get an idea of what I did here just by looking at the color and the detail within these pieces. I did get a tray set on the side with the edges, so that's good. But anyways, I kind of feel like this will give me a good head start anyways on getting this puzzle going. So let's um, put these on trays and let's get started. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Edges were pretty easy overall. And I've been able to move this around my table, you know, very, very slowly and carefully. And there aren't too many casualties, which is also another plus. But still, you got to be delicate with this one. Anyways, let's move on to the, the hard stuff, which is, to me, pretty much the rest of it. So, let's go. And I don't really know why I tend to feel like these kinds of images will get the best of me. It's mostly wording, and I'm sure that's commonly fairly simple to put together. Is it? I don't know. But anyways, I couldn't help but keep thinking about my last experience with a Dollar Tree art box, and that one was a 500 count. 
And those pieces were so light and flimsy that I was afraid to even breathe too hard on it because I thought they would just blow across the table. The pieces in this 350 count set were totally different. They had more substance to them, if, if that makes sense. And I knew that if I suddenly had to sneeze, it, it would be okay. And what was also surprising was that none of my pieces were damaged. That was cool. So I guess my sorting wasn't that bad because I seem to be getting through it pretty darn quick. Now I'm sure as you can see in the camera there is quite a bit of glare um, with both of these puzzles if that light source is a little too close to the puzzle or on top of it. Honestly I find it best to work on puzzles in the natural light because ugh, this glare situation drives me nuts. But anyways. We're almost done here, so you know what? Let's continue with this. This puzzle took me about 1 hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't know what I was so worried about with this image. It was easy, it was fun, and I loved it. And I will display this puzzle somewhere in my house. It's so cool. Okay. I'm actually quite shocked because I kind of expected something totally different when it came to these Dollar Tree sets. And that's mainly because, you know, I've done some of them before. I remember what the others were like. But this, this was, this was different. And the more I stare at them, the more I can't believe how different this experience has been. Now, I'm not saying that these sets were absolutely perfect, but for the price that you pay, I kind of almost feel like they are. I felt just such a huge difference with not only with the way they felt, but the way they looked because you have that really nice clear print and they're not dull looking, they're sharp. And again, the fit isn't like a very tight fit. They do slide nicely into each other, but the hold is not like super solid but there were many, many instances where I could hold up small sections together. And these aren't boring piece shapes. You actually get about, I believe it's four or five different shapes here. So it's fun. Now I'm starting to wonder because these particular sets were 350 piece counts. Now I've only ever done the 500 count of the art box. But now I'm starting to wonder if there is actually a difference in terms of the puzzle count that you get versus the quality. Is it like, you know, the lower the count, the better the quality of the piece is? And then the higher the count, the less better the quality is? Is that kind of the trade-off here that, you're, that you get? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I want to open up very quickly. This is just an experiment. Let's open up my previous 500 piece art box set that I did. And then I do have one of the new 500 art box sets. Let me go pull one. So in here, I have the art box set that I did previously. And I kind of want to see, wow, I'm already seeing guys a huge difference here. So this is the piece from the 500 count art box set that I did previously. And this is a humongous difference compared to the 350 piece art box set. But I do have the more recent, uh, more recently produced sets from art box. And I kind of want to see if this has changed as well. And so far from what I'm seeing just by opening this, the piece size is the same as the previous set, but I want to see what these feel like. All right, I think we solved the mystery here. So it's true. The higher the piece count you get from the Dollar Tree sets, the lesser the quality is. So really, when you're trying to decide what to get from Dollar Tree in terms of puzzle sets, it really depends on what you want to get out of your puzzle. Is it the satisfaction of putting a particular image together? Are you looking for, you know, a good challenge in terms of a higher piece count? Or do you care more about the old, the, 
overall quality and overall experience of putting the image together. I personally prefer the overall quality and experience from the 350 count sets. And I'm not saying that I'm not looking forward to putting this pancake one together because you know, this is the other one that I really gotta get hanging up on my wall. I mean, if I can actually get it to hang up on my wall, probably not, but you know, I'm gonna try. But there is one thing that I haven't checked yet with these two sets. And I think we need to do that together real quick. So let's see this. All right, let's give this a try. So the first one I want to pull here is the Puzzle Bug 350 piece set. Okay, this might go terribly wrong, but let's let's just do it. Let, let's see here. Oh boy, not bad. All right, that was, oh geez. Well, I almost made it. This doesn't count. This was my fault, this right here. This one I'm most worried about because I really don't want to damage this one because this is the image that I want to hang up somewhere. So let's see if we can do this without destroying it. Well, look at that, guys. Well, that was surprising. I must say, I am really impressed. And I must say, I highly recommend you try either the art box or the puzzle box sets from Dollar Tree. Because really, you're getting pretty much the same experience with both of these sets. I, I absolutely love these. I will definitely be picking up more of the 350 piece count sets. And if any of you guys have tried any of these two particular brands from Dollar Tree, let me know down below what have your experiences been like and what are your overall thoughts in general about them? And I'm pretty sure very soon I'm gonna be coming out with the other Dollar Tree puzzle reviews because I do have those premium sets from there and I'm curious to see what those are like compared to the other ones. So if you're new here and wanna check out what I think to those Dollar Tree sets, be sure to subscribe. And if you're looking to make some new puzzle friends, you can click on the link down below to join my puzzling community. Well guys, thank you for watching. Hope all is well and I will see you in the next one.